Okay, so let's talk about something that engineers provide the manufacturer, a drawing or a sketch. And this could either be a paper physical drawing or it could be something on a CAD model. Uh, besides the physical part itself that's on this drawing, there's a lot of information that is being presented to the manufacturer. So we have down in the bottom here something called a title block, which typically has the name of the component, the company, uh, usually the engineer or the designer that designed it, the revision if there is any, and sometimes even some tolerance boxes. So let's talk about what the difference is between dimensions and tolerances. So what is a dimension? Well, a dimension is a physical size of a feature, and it's usually depicted here by what we call leader lines that point to that particular dimension. For instance, here on this little bore that's here, we have a dimension of 1.625. So that's telling me, the manufacturer, that that's what you want the size of that finished feature to be. However, nothing is perfect. We're not perfect. Machines are not perfect. And there are different degrees of tolerance that different types of machining and manufacturing equipment can hold. For instance, let's take a bandsaw, for instance. A bandsaw just cuts raw stock. Bandsaws can hold about plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch tolerance, some a little bit closer on smaller parts, and usually the larger the part goes, uh, if it's a regular band type saw, the more flexibility gets into the blade, so the wider that tolerance grows. So if you as an engineer puts a dimension onto a part and then tolerance it and tell me to hold that, that particular dimension to let's say plus or minus ten thousandths of an inch, that's not going to happen on that bandsaw. So therefore I have to rough cut it on the bandsaw and then pick a piece of equipment such as the mill behind me in order to finish that dimension. So what is the tolerance? Well, tolerance is the amount of allowable deviation to that dimension. And we have tolerance for several reasons, right? One is to allow for that imperfection between me as a human being turning cranks that I'm not perfect, the machines that have their own different uh, tolerance as well. But the other reason for tolerance is that things need to work. So let's take a tolerance of let's say a sixteenth of an inch and let's take it on something that's uh, for instance the project that we do in this in this particular class for level one which is a business card holder. A business card holder does what? It holds business cards. So those business cards really just need a block with a slot in it to hold those cards up. So if we made a mistake on that block, we made the block either a sixteenth of an inch too big or a sixteenth of an inch too small or the slot a sixteenth of an inch too wide, does that block still function? Of course it does, right? So we have something called the three F's in manufacturing, which is fit, form, and function. And it's something that you as an engineer need to understand because you will be applying the three F's to everything that you do. So let me repeat them. Fit, form, and function, all right? So of those three, Function is the number one thing that you consider first. What's it going to do? Because based on its function, that helps you decide what form it needs to take and what fits are required or the tolerances. So now let's just take something like a small vise, something that squeezes something, a screw that's got to go through a threaded hole. If we use that same tolerance of a sixteenth of an inch and that screw ended up being made a sixteenth of an inch too large, is it going to screw into that threaded hole? Of course not. So tolerance is relative to the function, and the tolerance is that amount of allowable deviation, and it's very, very important that we tolerance things correctly. So do we just make sure that we put tight tolerances on everything so that way everything works? No, because in manufacturing, there's a cost element, and a lot of engineers get themselves in deep trouble because they don't understand how to properly tolerance things. Uh, we've had engineers in the past, I know in the companies that I've worked for, that we've done parts and components that come out to the machine shop, and they put these ridiculously tight tolerance on things. Why? Because they don't understand how tolerance affects the manufacturing process. But think about this. If that saw only cuts material, it cuts material and can hold plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch, there's not a high amount of skill level required, and we don't need a very expensive piece of equipment to do that. But if you take that same tolerance and then you, you make it a one thousandths tolerance, well now all of a sudden, not only do you need a very expensive piece of equipment 
that has the capability of holding that tolerance, but you also need a higher skilled worker in order to maintain that tolerance. To understand how that tolerance is applied is extremely important. Something that you may not know is that a human hair is about three and a half thousandths thick. So an engineer that puts a plus or minus one thousandths tolerance on something, here's a little graphic here of a human hair. That's one thousandths of an inch inside of a human hair. Now there are some components that we have that must have that kind of a tolerance and even tighter. But for the business card holder project that we do in this class, that is a ridiculously close tolerance. And that same tolerance relates back into business as something that could cost, some, cost the manufacturer more. And because it can cost them more, that raises the price back to the engineer. And this again, it turns into something that becomes too expensive to manufacture. I mean, that's the simplest way to put it. So I've seen a lot of engineers in my lifetime do things like that. They over tolerance or they under tolerance because they don't understand it. And that gets them in trouble because in the end, root cause analysis on what went wrong is it goes back to what the engineer put on there. So how important are you to the manufacturing process? You are the first person that pulls the handle on that cash register. You're the one that puts those tolerances, the material choices, the dimensions and the features into a CAD drawing, into a, a print. And because of that, you're the one that is depicting for me, the manufacturer, which pieces of equipment that we need, we have a lawnmower going by, uh, which piece of equipment we need in order to satisfy the conditions and the tolerances that you put on that print. So you are very important to the manufacturing process. And that's why we feel that these hands-on type classes are important. But even if it's not a hands-on course at this particular moment, it's still relative for you to understand what your role is in manufacturing. You are basically married to a manufacturer the entire time that you're an engineer. Because if your intention is to design things that are never to be made, well then just consider yourself an artist. But if your intention is that it is to be made, well, someone has to make it like a manufacturer. So right away, there's that relationship. So that's the most important thing that you need to take away from the basics of this level one course, that you understand that you have a direct role in manufacturing.